The Mirth Lake Carnival seems amazing on the surface, but once you enter, you can never leave. The food always refills, the games never stop, and the music and fun is endless. Your merriment lasts until you've been drained of all life by the mysterious curse that is taking over the carnival. Can your heroes free the Mirth Lake Carnival from the curse's grasp, or will they be trapped here forever too? World Forge Miniatures is a small studio creating 3D printable Dungeons and Dragons terrain to bring your epic tabletop worlds to life. February's terrain collection transports you to a magical carnival full of games, food, laughter, and mayhem. And luckily enough for me, they reached out and we got a little collaboration on the go. My name is Troy, this is Facility D20, come on in, we got a fun carnival to make. This is the canvas that I got to work with. My plan is to make like a little carnival area here and build this up with some cobblestone, grass, trees, stuff like that. And my plan is to use this really cheap dollar store clay that I bought. I don't got a lot of confidence in this, but I'm gonna give it a try. And my cobblestone foam roller here. This was designed and printed over on Quinian Budgets Crafts. Check his channel out and tell him Facility D20 hit you up. And uh, I guess the only thing we can do now is get at it. Now, I'm used to using DAS air dry clay, which is like 20 bucks a brick, and this stuff is like $1.50. And my usual plan didn't work out at all, and it totally stuck to my desk. So, new plan, let's just do it right on the piece of plywood. Now I like to use glue to make sure that this clay sticks down and it helps it from cracking up. It's a good idea to get the surface of the clay nice and wet with some water before you use the textured roller on it. That way it helps the clay from sticking into little grooves of the textured roller. This thing works like a charm. Once you're done you can just use your finger to kind of smooth in the hard lines. Clean up the edges before the clay dry. You want to do this before the clay dries. If not, it's going to be hard to get off. And then mix up some ground compound using some acrylic caulking. Some paint. A little bit more paint. And then throw some sand in for added texture. Then I just used a trowel to spread it all over the place here. And the sand was making this a lot harder to spread than normal. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash the shit out of that like button. YouTube loves that stuff, so it really helps these videos out and I appreciate it. After a while, I just gave up with the trowel and got in there with my hands, and this made this process go a lot smoother. Then I took some Mod Podge and acrylic paint and mix it together so I can make a base coat for the cobblestone and the Mod Podge also helps this clay from cracking up as it dries.
If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and join the facility. I'd love to have you here. Then I took a whole bunch of paints and I watered them down into washes. Earth tones and greens and yellows and browns and blacks. Then I just started randomly going over this whole piece of plywood here with all these different colors. And just wet blending it all together. To try to get rid of that monotone brown look. And I let that dry up overnight. Then I took a little bit of tan paint and dry brushed it up just to make some of the colors pop back up again. Here's a little man helping me out. See if you guys can guess what movie's on in the background there. It's hard to see, uh, I don't think anybody's gonna get it. Clean up the edges with some brown paint. Now, rocks aren't gray. That's what everybody liked to say, so I washed it with some blue. Washed it with some black. It's looking good so far. I'm gonna take some grays and some blues and do some simple dry brushing here on a cobblestone to kind of like pop some highlights. And then the fun part, I'm gonna get a bunch of glue and some flock and I'm gonna go ahead and flock this whole thing. I'm not gonna do static grass because I want like a foresty, more of a fantasy vibe with this diorama. So we're gonna use like four or five different types of flock here. Well, let's get back at it. Just sporadically dry brushed on some blues and grays to make these rocks pop. and some watered down white glue. Apply this everywhere, this will dry clear so there's no worries about it. Then I applied the flock. I went with a light green, medium green, and then a dark green, and followed it back up with another sprinkling of light green. And some matte clear coat to just keep all this from falling off and help it stick down. Then while I was doing all that I was also printing all these parts and there was a lot of printing. Things didn't really get off to the best start. In my first print I had half a fail and then another fail. A whole bunch of stuff was stuck on the FEP and I had to go ahead and clean it up. And then finally, on the third print, also not good. I checked for level, everything was perfectly level. Lubed up my vat again with some dry lubricant. But I had a feeling I knew what the problem was. I know the problem I'm having is just too damn cold outside. It's been like minus 35 to minus 40 all week. In this big open room, I just can't keep up to an ambient temperature above 20 degrees. It's always floating around 19 this time of year. But I know what I'm going to do to fix that. I got this space heater here and I'm going to aim it at these printers and hopefully get this resin up to a proper temperature so I can print. Oh my, what you got to do man in the middle of nowhere.
So that's not too bad. Looks like a lot better print. I did lose one part here, but that's not a big deal. It's probably just a normal printing issue. So I'm gonna go ahead, take these out, clean it up. I might tighten up the fit a little bit just to make sure it's not too loose and get another print started. And hopefully that's the end of these problems. This actually was a tiny bit loose, so I just tighten it up hand tight. Back in the printer it went. And then we got down to it. Washed my parts in IPA 70%, which is getting dirty, needs to be changed now. And then after that, it was just success after success after success. And I spent the next week just running off parts with no issues. Another beauty of a print, that wagon really kicks ass. Not everything is going to be printed on the resin printer. I am going to print some parts on the FDM printer. I'm thinking the tents. I got my files sliced up and loaded on my little flash drive here. I'm going to get this thing going. And the FDM prints all came off perfectly. I got a whole bunch of stuff printed in resin and FDM. I definitely got enough stuff here to start putting it together, cleaning up the prints, priming it, and painting it. I got a few more things that's going to print over there that I'll add to the diorama once it's done, but I think it's time to get at it and get this painting done. Some parts were gray and some parts were black, depending on what colors I was going to go with in the end. All the wood grain I airbrushed up. Once I had that base color down, I done some dry brushing to make the wood grain pop. And that final highlight really gives that high fantasy vibes. Then it was time for the details of all these parts that I had printed. My plan was to go with really bright and fun colors considering this was a carnival, but also trying to do it in sort of a quick fashion because I had a ton of stuff to print. So mostly just base colors and contrasts and washes. I'm still not a big fan of contrast paint, so I'm interested to try the new Army Painter Speed Paint, see if they're any better. Now normally you can just do a contrast right over this gray, but I really wanted the colors to be more vibrant. So I painted them in a base coat before applying washes and shades. Really love these little signs that came with everything. Kind of adds a lot of flavor to the set. Balloons I just did with a whole bunch of different contrast colors. Not the most detailed way to do it, but it's definitely one of the fastest ways to do it. Quick little dry brush to make the sign pop a little bit. This hook the duck game, this is really cool. This is one of my favorite pieces of the set. Then it was the FDM prints. I done all these tents with my airbrush. And I did this with the Army Painter Air Triad system which essentially is three different shades of the same color applied to low, mid, and high to give this effect here. 
So I was happy with the brightness of the tents. Now for the part that everybody's been waiting for. I got everything ready to go and we're going to mount it all on our base here. I even got some Arts and Minds trees that I'm going to put into this little diorama. Now, originally I was just going to glue all this down, but this terrain is just going to be so useful for other things like taverns and parks and cities and everything like that throughout my D&D game. So what I'm going to do as a trick that I like to use is get some sticky tack and just use sticky tack to hold things down in place. And that way when I'm moving the game boards around and stuff, it, uh, everything doesn't fall over. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set everything up with sticky tack and I can't wait to really bring this carnival to life. The entrance and the ticket booth. Directional sign. And a trash can. Corn dogs and candy and lemonade. Prizes and the knockdown game. Carnival wagon. Loom pop game. Spin the wheel. Candies, popcorn, up the duck game. Then some trees. This set is absolutely amazing. I can only imagine the immersion that the players is going to get playing in this whole little setup. I can't wait to run this. I'm definitely gonna run this first chance I get. World Forge Miniatures done an amazing job with this set. It's very colorful and got lots of character. It's got this high fantasy vibes. So many little mini games too I can run in d and It's just super, super cool set. Guys, I do have a Patreon account if you want to check it out and help support the channel and really help me take these videos to the next level. I've got lots of other cool videos on my channel. Stick around, check some out. There's lots of fun stuff here on the go at the facility.